Hi and welcome to today's um, movement series. So we're going to be using a ring to support us, to make us feel amazing, but also to challenge us. So once you've got your ring, let's get you down onto the floor. So beginning just with your setup, with your head and your spine in a good alignment, your feet in line with the sitting bones underneath you. And then just feeling really comfortable onto the mat surface here. We're going to start with the motion of the pelvis, just rolling back in towards the floor, creating a flattening of your lower back, and then rolling your um, sit bones forward, pubic bone aiming down towards the ground, creating an arch in your back. So as we go through this movement, it's just a gentle motion, feeling that the pelvis is free to move over the steady legs and your spine is getting a little bit of a massage. So you'll notice that your body is moving up and down the mat with you as the pelvis is moving. We'll do one more in both directions and then come to find yourself in a balanced shape again. We're going to tilt the pelvis to the left side. So the right hip is going to lift and then tilt it to the right side and the left pelvis is going to lift. So as we do this, this is a challenging one for some people. So if you just put your fingers at your um, lower ribs and onto your hip bones, you don't want that space to change length. You want it to stay steady. So it means we're not shortening at the waist and twisting the pelvis. It is just a little rocking from one side to the other. And then we're going to come back to the center. So we've done forward back and we've done left right. Now we're going to do our diagonal line. So we're going to begin by going into the left back hip and then forward to the right sit bone area. So just rocking from that motion forward and back. And as you do this, this is not a common place for us to normally move through. Well, it is common in our everyday life, but we're not aware that this is what we are able to do. And then we're going to shift to the other side. So into the right back and forward to the left. So you will notice in your own body that one way is going to be a lot smoother or a lot more balanced or coordinated than the other direction. And that's okay. All we're doing with our bodies at the moment is just exploring. We're going to finish off with a circle. So just rolling through the hips, going through all those different ranges we went through and just creating a nice um, even movement around the back of your pelvis and sacrum. Let's go in the opposite direction. And again, whenever we do double sides, you want to make sure that you are really aware of if the two sides feel different or how do they feel the same. Once you've done your third circle, then we're just going to rest the pelvis back towards the floor. From here, we're going to take ourselves into a bridge. So we're going to go through that initial curl back phase and then begin pressing through the feet as you aim your pelvis up and your knees out away from you. And then we're going to roll you down slowly, mindfully and gently towards the mat. And then we'll do that again. So remember, if rolling into your lower back, produces any sense of discomfort, then you don't want to roll there. You want to rather just raise the hips and lower the hips instead. So, you know, there's many benefits to bridging. I talk about this all the time. It's not always just about the spinal mobility, although that's probably the biggest um, joy out of the movement. There's lots of work happening through your legs, through your pelvis, through your core, um, through your feet. So it really doesn't matter which version you're doing. You've got to work with the body that you are presented with. On this next one, we're going to stay up into the air and we're going to have a little play of that circle again. So this one's a little bit challenging. So just rolling around through three times, making the circle in the air and then roll around in the opposite way. Now, I know how challenging this is. So if you need to close your eyes or draw a circle for yourself and follow it with your finger, that's also available to you. And then lowering yourself all the way down. All right, let's grab a hold of that ring and we're going to open the two knees and place it between the inner thighs. From here, we're just going to go into feeling relaxed with the legs open. So you've got the hold, but you're not squeezing as yet. We're going to start with our right leg only, squeezing the ring into the center and then opening it back out and repeating the right leg still in and out. So our record number or our rep number is going to be for five. So as I'm bringing my leg into the center, I've got some very good strong muscles on the inside of my thigh, my, um, which are my inner thighs or adductor muscles. And as I let my leg open, then they're getting lengthened. 
and we'll hold the right leg open and now we'll work on the left side. So as you squeeze into the ring, this is not a forceful movement. You just want to see what is available to you. Maybe you can get the leg into parallel. Maybe you're going only halfway. Whatever is there is what is there. We've got one more time squeezing the leg in and then opening it out. Now we're going to do the two at the same time. So as you bring the legs together, again, this is not about having to slam the circle shut, but it is about a sense of rolling the thighs in to meet each other and then rolling them out away from each other. We'll do another two like this and then another one. We're going to keep those knees slightly broadened and then from there we're going to hover our hips into the air as we go into a bridge again. So the knees staying apart and then from this height of our bridge we're going to go into the squeeze. So the minute we are with our hips in the air there's a lot more work happening for your body. So if you're feeling like this is not ready for you yet then stay at the bottom and just repeat with the bottom on the floor. Four and then we've got one more coming up. Five and then lowering yourself all the way back and down. So taking the ring away and just letting your knees open out. So just getting a stretch through those inner legs. So we always want to feel like we can tone our muscles, but we also want to be able to feel like we can lengthen our muscles. Bringing the legs back together. We're going to take the uh, ring now through your legs and take it to the outsides of your thighs. So in the start, we're not overly pushing into the ring. The ring is here just as a gentle guidance for your knees. So again, up we go into our bridge position. So we're used to being in the bridge, but what we're not used to is now keeping the pelvis steady, keep the legs as steady as you can, and stretch your right leg away from you. So the knee extends, and then we're going to rest the foot. We're still working on the right and press it out to straighten, and then bringing it back. So the ring is very supportive in holding your position of your legs for you. It's going to be doing a lot of work on the left leg right now or the standing leg. And we've got one more time to take that leg out and bringing it back. Again, if you need to just reposition your body, maybe hover the hips a little higher. And then we're getting ready for the left leg to stretch away from you. So reaching it out and bringing it back. And as we do that, we are really feeling good and strong and stable in the standing leg. And even though the ring is on the outside, there's a lot of work that's happening all around the leg. We've got two more times of your leg extending and bending, and then last time, and then bringing it all the way back and then resting to the mat surface. From here, we're going to take our arms into a right angle shape at the top edge of our mat. So rolling the forearms backward. Now, not everyone can get there easily, so try not to dip into your wrist. Rather say, you know, just go to where it feels okay. From this position, we're going to hover the two knees up into the air. We're going to keep our elbows rested down. Take your knees to the left side and peel your spine and pelvis to the left and then bringing yourself through the midline and taking it over towards the right. So as we do this at the moment, eyes are still just looking upward or head is facing towards the ceiling. So just getting a gentle twist from one side to the other and not going so far that you feel like you're going to lose control of your arms behind you. This time as you take your legs to the left, I'd like you to turn your head to the right. So we're doing opposite motions in our spine and then of course changing directions. So the top part of the spine is turning one way and the bottom of the spine is turning the other way. So we've got so many joints in our spine and so many abilities to move and uh, just feeling really free and easy in this shape. From here we'll keep the ring where it is. Take the hands and slide them now to a lace behind the back of your head. From here, we're going to nod the head forward, curl the chest up and look towards the ring and then lowering yourself back towards the mat. And then repeating that, feel the back of the neck nice and long as you curl yourself up, keeping the legs as steady as possible and then down to the ground. We have another three. As you're curling up, just feeling the back of the pelvis staying steady. So you don't want your knees to come to you and lift your bottom off of the floor and then lowering down. And two more as you roll yourself up and lower yourself down. 
and then final one we're going to stay in the curl forward and from here start to just aim your feet towards the ground and then bring them back up so you don't have to go all the way towards the ground just a little bit away from you and back is all that's required however if you're stable and you know you've got the support from your back and your front then take the legs a little lower we've got another two whatever version you are playing with and then one more time bringing the knees back up into the air and lowering your head and shoulders down we'll slip our legs out of the strap or the ring and place your left toes into the ring side so you can go with hands over or hands under whatever works best in your body and then just getting a nice stretch out through the back of the leg we're going to go into a point of your foot and a pull back of flex so point and flex and point and flex we'll do another two of those just getting a bit of mobility in your ankle all the muscles around the back of the calf and of course this is great for our nerves as well from here we're going to slide the right leg out onto the mat surface take your right hand over the top and then send your left hand into the folded crease of your hip we're going to bring the leg just over the center line maintaining the left hip on the ground pull the leg up a little closer to your shoulder now that might be enough to stay but if you really want to get juicy we're going to rotate your thigh inward so spinning your toes down toward the floor and that's going to produce a nice stretch down from the back of the pelvis all the way towards the foot taking in a good breath in and out and then we're going to bring ourselves all the way back up from here so we're going to grab over onto the left hand now hold your right hand towards your right hip you're going to open your leg to the side and I'd like you to try and feel like you're going to bring it up to the corner of your mat and if you have the ability maybe your elbow can rest on the floor maybe you don't have that ability so whatever is going to work for you you might have to keep your arm straight as your arm pull, as your leg pulls towards the side so again just taking a nice deep breath keeping the back of that right hip on the ground surface and then bringing your leg through the center and we'll switch legs over so we're going to start with our left knee bent foot on the floor choose your over or under grip shape and then we point and flex through the ankle and getting some stretch of the calf and some nobility of our nerves two more of these and then holding the foot up towards the ceiling, lengthening the, le the left leg down onto the ground. Move the right hand into a cross position over, sorry, left hand and right hand onto your hip. Bringing the leg over the center line and really important to keep that right hip grounded underneath you. Pull it up towards the shoulder line and then if it's available, we rotate. If it's not, you just stay where you need to stay. So when we do stretches like this, you don't want to go to the end of your range and your capacity where you can't breathe easily or relax other parts of your body. You want to make sure that you are really enjoying the stretch and then bringing that leg there. We switch over, right hand holds on, left hand holds your left hip. And then you're going to move the leg away from the center, working on that inside line of your thigh again. And like I said, maybe you can get your elbow to the floor, maybe not. You just do you. And just focus on the stretching of the inner leg. And then let's take another breath out as we bring our leg all the way through to the center. From here, we're just going to turn onto our side and we're going to place the ring around the top of the leg area. So you just got to figure out where it needs to be as we send our top arm nice and long. So we're in a hover of our top leg to our bottom leg. So I'd like you to now do what I asked you not to do earlier, and that's to shorten your waist. So squeeze your rib to your hip and then lengthen your waist and shorten the waist and lengthen the waist. We just have three more like that so narrowing the gap widening the gap two so this again is another movement that we do in walking but we're not even aware of what our body is doing and it's okay we don't have to be aware of that but now you know keeping that where it is rest your hand on the floor if you need to or keep it at your hip 
and we're going to take that leg back behind us, keeping the ring in position, and then bringing your leg forward. Now, you might not put it in the right position in the first instance, so if you need to reposition your circle, go ahead and do that. And the movement here that we're focusing on is the backward movement and ideally keeping the leg as horizontal as possible. We've got two more of these ones to go. And then final one, taking it back. So nicely done and drop the ring. <laughs> All right, from here we'll go over to the other side. You can do a rollover or like me, just switch sides so that you can keep looking at the screen. And then as we're here, we're gonna place that ring in position again. I've got my friendly baby coming to say hi. Hi there. All right, out the way. So from here, resting the head down, we're starting to hover the leg just away from the bottom leg and then we're going to go into the shortening of the waist and the lengthening of the waist and shortening and lengthening so again keeping the top leg in a hovered position as you do this mo movement through the top of the waist is just going to make you start to feel a little bit stronger through that top hip last one as we reach that top hip long and then going with the leg behind us and bringing the leg in front of us. And again, sending the leg away and bringing it forward. So it's quite a common thing when the leg goes back that people's knees wanna open up. And that's not really how we're designed. In fact, as the leg goes behind us, the fibro naturally spirals in. This is not you collapsing your knee down. This is just what's happening at a joint perspective inside of the hip joint. All right, I've lost count, so always. I'll say that was number four, may have been already five, but here we go for our last one. And then resting and lowering everything back down. Superb work. From here, we're going to come on to our front and take the ring behind us. This is one of my favorite moves to do with the ring. So having the hands just lightly holding on the edges and a flat surface to the ceiling from here we're going to peel the front of the chest up reaching the arms away with you getting a big broad position through your chest and then lowering yourself to the mat and then again peeling the front of the chest up lengthening the arms let them hover just off of your bottom if you've got that range and then bringing it down now you can stay with that as your version or otherwise for the next few as you come up can you also hover your legs so feeling like the knees are clearing the mat surface and then bringing yourself back down again. And again, two more times as we peel our body up, feeling really long from the crown of the head all the way out through the toes and to the ground we go. And last time as we peel ourselves up in this version, nice long lift, beautiful length through your body and then resting yourself down. Just put the ring off to the side and press yourself back towards your feet. So as close to your heels as you can comfortably go, maybe even making them go nice and wide and stretching your arms out. If you're not able to get towards your feet like that, just staying up on your knees and stretching the arms forward will also do for that. and then bringing yourself up into an all fours so very similar to what we just did lying on our side we're going to finish with a little bit of weight bearing work so place the heel um, against the sponge and the sit bone against the sponge holding the ring you're already going to feel a bit of activity at the back of the leg and we're going to do a movement of your leg opening to the side and bringing it back we started as one of our exercises with the ring between our legs and squeezing in so if you could imagine there was a second ring between the knees, maybe you could get a little bit more benefit of that inner thigh action. So we'll go for one more time as that leg travels in. From here, we're going to take the leg up and bringing it down. So while the leg is moving, we should ideally not have anything else moving. So we've got our head positioned higher than shoulders and of course shoulders higher than hips. So two more of these as we gently raise the leg and lower and then last time lift and lower we're going to make a circle so we're going to take the knee out to the side up and down 
Now you don't have to make this a very big circle, we're just doing three in each direction, but you will start to feel the benefit immediately. And then change that direction around. And again, what is possible to circle in the hip without disrupting the rest of your spinal movements and then resting down from there. From here, what we'll do quickly is just take your leg forward and give it a quick stretch. So we've got the, uh, the back of the leg that wanted to play up for you there and just giving that a nice big stretch out in front. All right, let's get set up for the second side. So again, we've got the heel supported and the sit bone supported and just making sure that it's in good place. Sometimes it can move out of alignment. So if it flings out, just reposition. And then when you are ready, we're going to hover your left leg out to the side and back. Now, if you go too far, you're gonna to start to do all sorts of weird things in the side of the waist. So making sure that your steady position is hands under shoulders, knees under hips, classic. No need to alter that. Four, and then one more five. I always laugh because I'm pretty sure that wasn't. But anyway, let's go up and down. So you might notice if you're looking that the movement is not super high. I'm not trying to get my knee towards the ceiling as such. I'm just trying to get movement without losing the ring. And on this side, I can already feel like I might be losing the ring. So I'm just being really careful that I don't. Four, and then one more time, five. I feel like it might slip at the moment. So I just need to reposition that a little bit better. All right, let's go for our circle. So three times around. See how precise you can be with your circling. And once you've done your three one way, going the opposite. Concentration is a good thing in this exercise. All right, and then resting out of that, and let's bring that leg forward and just stretch out the back of that. Bye. Oh, so fingertips onto the floor is great. If you can't reach, you can always hold onto your thigh or have something in support around you. Terrific. All right, from here, we're just going to take a seat down, whether you want to be kneeling or if you are better at sitting with cross-legged legs, that's also fine. So from here, we're going to grab a hold of the ring and then just lengthen your arms out in front of you. Keep the ring facing around the chest bone and then rotating yourself towards one side and back to center and then twisting over towards the other side and back to center. Two more times each way. So with this one, what's really good is to make sure that you don't start to see your lower body moving. So you don't want your pelvis and your knees to shift as you do your twisting in your upper body. And then we're going to add on. So as you go towards the side, we're going to then reach the arms up above and rotate towards the right and coming all the way through to the left and up and rotating to the right. So one more time going in this direction up and then pausing when we get towards the right and then change the direction the arms travel up twist to the left and through two more and then last time and then back to center and bringing the arms in well that's all we've got time for today so i hope you enjoyed it and uh that it makes you feel amazing in your body. Just a little bit of movement every now and then is so much better for you than trying to uh, stick to a routine where you sometimes fail in maybe trying to have an hour workout every single day. Um, you know where I am when you're looking for more inspiration. Thanks for joining.